Shine with the joy and the love of the Lord we are called To be light for the kingdom To live in the freedom of the city of God We are called to act with justice We are called to love tenderly We are called to serve one another with God. Come, open your heart. Show your mercy to all those in fear. We are called to be hope for the hopeless. So hatred and violence will be no more. We are called to act we are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. Sing, sing a new song. Sing of that great day when all will be one. God will. this morning for Sacred Space. This is the fifth Sunday of the season of Easter and we are so glad you are here with us. As we gather today, let us remember that we in the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Michigan are on the sacred land of the Anishinaabe where we work, live, teach, learn, and build community. This land is the territory of the Anishinaabe people. We recognize the repeated violations of sovereignty, territory, and water perpetuated by European and other settlers that have impacted the original inhabitants of this land. We extend our respect to citizens of these First Nations people who live here and their ancestors who have lived here for over 500 generations and to all indigenous people. We also acknowledge that this acknowledgement is insufficient. It does not undo the harm that has been done and that continues to be perpetuated now against indigenous people, their land, air, and water. So as we gather today, let us pray this week's collect. God of glory, whose beloved took the shadow road and found life in the darkness. May his love be our law undimmed by the fear that condemns what it does not understand, slipping through the hands of those who cling to sacred power, making us witness to the power of new birth through Jesus Christ, the firstborn. Amen. Our preacher this morning is wonderful, fabulous Jane Sisklusis. So settle in and enjoy a half hour of some prayers and worship and beautiful music. one in the spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord and we pray that 
that all unity may one day be restored and they'll know we are Christians reading from the gospel according to John. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I has, have loved you, so also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Good morning. Good morning. I have to tell you, I've been working a long time on this reflection, and I kept getting hung up, not on the actual passage, but on all the things that came into my mind when I started pondering it. So bear with me. Um, I think it's because I got hung up on how people perceive Christians and how Christians perceive themselves. You know, I thought about this, and I think Jesus didn't tell his friends to be Christian or to call themselves that. And if he were asked about that today, I wonder if he would reply as he, as he liked to do with a parable of some sort. And then it occurred to me, well, actually, Jesus might say, when asked, should we call ourselves Christians? Uh, there are no longer Jew or Greek. There are no longer slave or free. There are no longer male or female. And perhaps there's no longer Christian. Please, I know that sounds terrible, but I said, as I said, bear with me. The other thing that sort of uh, caught me up was today's song, sung so beautifully by Charles Murphy. It's called, it's got kind of two titles, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love, and also We Are One in the Spirit. And I thought of this song right away when I was pondering today's passage. And it's not that the song is all that amazing or wonderful, but it's it's warm and fuzzy. 
and it's uh, something I grew up with. It was very popular in, this, in the 1960s and 70s. I've sort of always thought of it like a Christian anthem of, of a sort, but not, not perverse like onward Christian soldiers. So here I am uh, working on what I was going to say today, and then it struck me. And it was like a bolt of lightning, perhaps, maybe not that much, but let me just say, I have to be honest. I don't like, I don't really don't like calling myself a Christian. And this has been the case for a while, but I have to say, lately, with all of the news coverage of people who are committing acts of violence and hatred and using Christian simple symbols as a cover, it's even worse. And I don't want to be mistaken for a Christian who uses scripture to legitimize conversion therapy or trans, anti-trans rhetoric. And I'm ashamed of my denomination, to be honest. It has colonial blood on its hands from taking part in the trafficking and enslaving of fellow human beings from West Africa to building empire on stolen land. These things make me feel embarrassed. And yet, I love the people in my church. I love my colleagues. I love the liturgy and the polity, and I love the baptismal covenant. I love working side by side with people that I may not always agree with as we try together to make the world a better place. And I accept responsibility of trying to make up in some small part for the people in my faith and my church who came before me. Until the day I feel comfortable calling myself a Christian without cringing, I will wholeheartedly call myself a follower of Jesus. So this, this week's gospel reading, it takes us right back to the Last Supper. Jesus is about to depart from his friends and his life on earth. The clock is ticking. He tells them, you have to listen up. I don't have much time. And he leaves them with one thing, a new commandment, he calls it, to love one another. So this is their last time together, right? Their, their last time breaking bread and it's his last chance to give them his final directive. He tells them, you're going to look for me and you're not going to find me because you can't go where I'm going. And because of this, when I'm gone, you will have to be me. In the most efficient way, I, I just love the fact that Jesus distilled his entire ministry in one new commandment, love one another. Love one another is what all of his earthly ministry boils down to. It's the simplest and yet most encompassing of messages. And Jesus did not actually mean for the disciples to love only one another in their small community. But I bet you knew that, right? We all know that. But we modern day disciples, we get lost sometimes. We don't always notice when we become inwardly focused we might not see the times that we become so disconnected from the wider community that we don't even know our neighbors and they surely don't know us. We lock ourselves, sometimes literally, in our church buildings. Then we do our thing, we go back our separate ways, and then this is really nothing new. And we keep repeating this over and over, whether we're in the UP or the church at large, because we get complacent and we get comfortable. And to make matters worse, when we experienced the pandemic lockdown, we were actually forced to go our separate ways, to live in our own little bubbles. But, you know, many people in our church communities did a very good job of taking care of their members. They checked up on those living alone, they made phone calls, they sent cards. And yet, how did we, they, all of us, how did we do with everyone else? How did we do in our neighborhoods and our wider communities? And I ask this not to shame anyone, because it's been a tough couple of years. And as we start to regather, and in some places we look for a renewed vision, we may want to take stock of the things that remain the same, and certainly the things that have changed. So on that note, I want to share with you some findings of a study that was commissioned by the Episcopal Church. 
So the church leadership wanted to find out what Americans were thinking about religion these days in light of the, the trying times that we live in. So they partnered with Ipsos, a global market research company, to do a national study called Jesus in America. The research found that while the majority of Americans polled believe Jesus was an important spiritual figure and they want equality in society, it also showed that Christians are not necessarily practicing what Jesus taught and Americans feel judged when talking about their beliefs. The study also found, and probably not too surprising, that the global pandemic has negatively impacted participation in organized religious activity and more people are finding spiritual fulfillment in nature. Well, when it comes to issues of dismantling racism, nearly half of Americans believe that racism exists in the church today, and yet a quarter of conservatives said that churches that discuss racism and slavery are doing it to make white people feel bad about themselves, and that's compared to 7% of liberals who take the same position. And when it comes to perceptions of Christians, about half of the Christians polled describe themselves as being giving, compassionate, loving, respectful, and friendly. And in contrast, nearly half of non-Christians associate Christians with characteristics, characteristics like uh, hypocrisy, being judgmental, self-righteousness, and arrogance. So are any of these findings surprising to you or discouraging, perhaps in some cases encouraging? Well, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry responded to this report by saying, this is a wake-up call for us, and based on what we learned, we are refocusing our efforts on being a church that looks and acts like Jesus and models its behaviors on his teachings. And he continues, we hope to ignite a revival of love that encourages all Americans to do a better job of loving their neighbors. After this bit of self-reflection, Bishop Curry called for the gospel work of reformation, as he calls it. In it, we're, we're asked to no longer center our attention on empire and establishment, to no longer fixate on preserving institutions, to no, and to no longer shore up white supremacy or, quote, anything else that hurts or harms any child of God. So if people are not seeing Christians for the love they share to others, then what are we to do? Well, obviously, first we have we got to do the work, and then we must change the narrative. No matter the label or identity we use when we are out there loving one another, we must amplify the voices and concerns of those who are experiencing great need. We must attract others to join in the ministries of feeding and healing, reconciliation and advocacy. And we must continue to be or start being identifiable as a safe place for all people where we share God's love with all our neighbors in all the many varieties and beautiful forms in which they come. And we as a church must also pay attention to our own actions and amend them when we get them wrong. We must own up to our past and seek to repair and heal. We must get back in touch with the risk-taking, liberating ways of Jesus. So let's continue. Let's continue to regather and recommit to our call of discipleship. Let's figure out together how we create a new narrative about the church. As a follower of Jesus, I look forward to doing this work alongside you. As the song says, we are one in the spirit, we are one in the Lord. My hope is that they will know we are Christians who love abundantly, lavishly, and without abandon. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lifted high on the cross, you look down on us in all our greatness and in all our sin. And in your amazing love, you sift out the good in us, in both our greatness and in our sin. 
Look in mercy on all who need you now, especially those who would not dream of approaching you, who feel themselves excluded from your love. Live for them, we pray, as you died for them, and have mercy on us who go in danger of thinking ourselves good when you have taught us who alone is good and shown us by your living and your dying how we may honor him. We pray in your name. Amen. Take a walk. 